Oh, boom! That's what I'm talking about. Hey! Oh, almost. Ah, uh, up top. Down low. <laughs> Woohoo! Next time. High five, squirrel. And you too. And you too. And you too. Ah, one day. Maybe. So why are you giving everything five? Oh, I'm giving out palms. Ha <laughs> ha, you know, for Palm Sunday. Uh, John, no. It's the wrong palm. Oh, right. Face palm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. I'm John, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Oh, wow, nice. Thank you, Brandon. What is this? Well, Brandon and I was feeling a little disconnected, so I've connected everything in my basement. Everything is smart now. Everything? Yes, everything. Whoa, okay. Whoa, what was that? Uh, I guess I'm hungry. <laughs> Did someone say hungry? Yeah. Did you hear? Wow, <laughs> that is smart. Mm -hmm. mm, you have got to be kidding me, this is amazing. It's light yet dense at the same time, creamy but not runny. Who made this? Oh, just my smart omelet maker. Oh, this isn't smart. This is genius. <laughs> Thank you. What else did you connect? Smart cameras. They're everywhere, operated by motion detectors. Really? Oh, for instance, the squirrel cam. The squirrel cam, right in there? Mm, that's right. Oh, hey. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's one over here. Where? <laughs> right there. There's a camera in there? Yes, it's in the eyeball. Huh? Whoa, okay, I see it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Right? Whoa. Oh. <laughs> that is really incredible. Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, is there is, is it just the two cameras? Oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> Watch. Whoa, <laughs> impressive. And also creepy. Thank you, but that's not the best part. I still wasn't feeling connected, so I created an AI version of me that can go places where I can't be or don't want to be. Here, <laughs> I call it Smart John. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, John, how is this John right here? Smart John. Smart, how's... Smart John's supposed to make you feel more connected. Well, if you can't make it to a party or a dinner, you can be set up on a laptop and it's like you're there. Not really. Oh, well, for instance, I promised my mom that I'd visit my great Uncle Perry today, but I, uh, well, you know, sometimes Uncle Perry just isn't much fun to visit. Wait, so you promised your mom that you would visit Go ahead, your... act like my great uncle who's 95 years old, Uncle Perry. Uh, okay. Here we go, watch. <clears throat> John, is that you? Uh-huh. I, I saw a cat the other day through my window and it, it, it made me think of a rutabaga. Ah. Do you know that me and your Aunt Mildred used to use rutabagas for our pies? Uh-huh. We had a pie yesterday, but it kind of tasted like cake. And someone told me that it was cake and I said, I know rutabaga pie when I taste it. Right. Did you know me and your Aunt Mildred used to grow rutabagas to make our pies? Uh-huh. Okay, I mean, that does work. Um, but I'm not sure if it's gonna make you feel more connected. And are you really keeping your promise? Oh, I, of course I am. Great Uncle Perry thinks I'm there right now. Okay, but w what if something happens? And... Smart John has been disconnected. Wait, wait what? <laughs> Reconnect Smart John. Connection lost. Oh no. Oh, I have to visit my Uncle Perry. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Disengage smart lock. Override of smart lock must be done from app on new phone. Oh, we locked in? Yes, yes, I told the smart lock to lock us in for two hours so I could focus and not eat all the cheese doodles. Um, what are you doing? Uh, I'm looking for my new smartphone. Can you call me? Can I call you? Yeah, sure, yeah. okay. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Um, what is happening? Hello? I connected my smart basement to my telephone so it'll ring everything so I don't miss another call. Hello? I, problem is I don't know what my new phone is. Oh, 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 oh. Hello? I'm not a smartphone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hello? It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hello? Hey fellas, how's it going? Well, we're locked in and John is breaking a promise, but besides that, great. Yikes. But it's all good. I mean, it's Palm Sunday, which means Easter is almost here. You know, the time of year we're reminded that Jesus came into an imperfect world to save imperfect people like me. Well, that is actually the best way to look at it. And our story today actually is about Palm Sunday, which sometimes is considered to be the beginning of the Easter story. Oh. Perfect, yeah. take it away. Some of you may have heard about Palm Sunday, but in case you haven't, let me set the stage. Okay, you see, Jesus had been teaching and traveling over three years, healing the sick and bringing good news to all people, including those who may have felt like they didn't always belong. This story was written down in the book of Matthew, the very first book of the New Testament. Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem and he was at a place called the Mount of Olives. He called over to two of his disciples and he said to them, go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a donkey tied up. Her colt will be with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Now, we don't know for sure, but the disciples might've been a little bit confused. It sounded like Jesus was asking them to steal someone's donkey. Huh? But Jesus added, if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. The owner will send them right away. Now, why did Jesus need a donkey? Well, a prophet named Zechariah predicted Jesus would need a donkey hundreds of years before. You see, through the prophets, God had promised to send a king to the world, a Messiah or Savior. Zechariah told about part of God's promise when he wrote, Say to the city of Zion, See, your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. He is riding on a donkey's colt. Some of you might be thinking, shouldn't the king be riding on something sort of extra fancy? Well, God doesn't always do the things we expect. God wanted to remind us that the promised king would be different. He would be humble and come to serve. Our savior, wasn't coming to take charge. And he wasn't coming just for the rich and powerful. Jesus, God's son, was coming to give the gift of life to all people who follow his ways. God had given this promise hundreds of years before, and a lot of people maybe thought that it wasn't gonna come true because they had been waiting for a long time. I mean, a really, really long time. but the waiting was finally over. Jesus, their long-awaited savior, was here. Well, the disciples did just like Jesus asked. They went out and found the donkey. And who knows what the donkey's owner said at first. But after the disciples explained that it was going to Jesus, they got what they came for. A ride fit for a king. The disciples put their coats on the donkey for Jesus to sit on. And meanwhile, in the city of Jerusalem, a large crowd had gathered and spread their coats all on the road. Some cut palm branches and spread them on the road as well. And that's where we get Palm Sunday. As Jesus came into the city, the people were overjoyed. 
They shouted praises to God. They were saying things like, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Some people asked who this man was on the donkey. And the news of Jesus spread through the whole city as the crowd celebrated his arrival. God sent Jesus to be our Savior. And he's a Savior that always surprises us. He was born in a manger with no royal proclamation. And as a man, he entered Jerusalem to a cheering crowd on the back of a donkey, not a kingly chariot, because God's promise came true. God's Son, our Savior, was sent for all people. And God's promises are still true even for us today. And that's the end of the story. For today. But it's only the beginning of the Easter story. And I cannot wait for Easter next week when God keeps the biggest promise. I'll see you then. Back to you guys. Thanks for the story, Kellen. Yeah, see ya. It's so wild that God promised a savior and then he came hundreds of years later. Yes, because no matter what, God keeps promises. And Jesus was God's greatest promise. I've got a question about that. Oh, well then reveal the question. Why are promises important? Oh, well, promises are a great way to show your commitment to people. Mm -hmm. And when you make a promise and then keep it, people know that you care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people like my great uncle Perry, I should keep that promise. <laughs> yeah, God's promises are important most of all because they show us how much God loves us. God promised to send a savior and God's promise came true with Jesus. Yes, and that's amazing. It that is amazing. Hey, thank you for joining us today. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this was the So-and-So Show. We'll see you next week for our Easter show. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you gonna go visit your Uncle Perry now? Well, how can I? We're still locked in. All right. Wait. Disengage smart lock. Smart lock, disengage. <laughs> We're free. Okay, you want to come visit my great Uncle Perry? With I'd me? love to. You think he'll have rutabaga pie? It's cake. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. I like rutabaga cake. Well, why does everything have to be Wi-Fi? Why, why can't it just be I'm absolutely certain Fi? I'm done with questions. Wi-Fi? I don't know. It's just Fi. You just gotta settle on it, son. You gotta settle on things, grandson. If you don't make up your mind, you're never going any places like Topeka. You gotta go.